everybody to join us here in this hall. A very warm welcome to the grand finale of Bits and Trees. Another digitization as possible is the title of this session. And Andrea Vetter will be the co-host. Well, thank you very much. We thought it might be nice to start off with a review before we tell you what we plan to do now. Now let me tell you what we plan to do in the next 90 minutes. We'll talk among ourselves up here on stage for 40 minutes. We've invited a number of reviewers who roved through the conference in order to get ideas and impressions. Afterwards, the audience will be invited to once again talk to the person sitting next to her about what you will take along and then We'll invite the organizers of the conference to the stage and they will present demands, demands resulting from the cooperation of the groups and initiatives involved in the conference, demands concerning how to redesign digitization and what dig digitization could look like in the future. Let me introduce the speakers on stage, first of all. Eric Albers, Communication and Program Manager of the Free Software Foundation in Europe. And he is uh, striving for free and sustainable software. Next to him, Carla Nova Castellos. She's working in the field of sufficiency policy and the agricultural turn. And she's also active in movements striving for global justice and climate justice. I'm also happy to welcome Elisa Lindiger, an archaeologist. And she uses 3D scanning and machine learning in archaeology. And she's also involved in the Prototype Fund, a fund supporting non-capitalist research projects. And I'm also happy to welcome Helene Pinsuan. She studied, studied among others, in Southeast Asia. Asia. And she is now involved in a study course which is called Rethinking the Economy. And she's also focusing on the agricultural turn. Now, about 2,000 people, about 200 different sessions. So we would like to briefly ask you our speakers up here on stage, what you think about the conference, what you've seen, what might change the world. Please, Elisa Lindinger first. Now, usually you have a certain idea in mind when coming to conference and I thought I would be able to recognize the techies because I know the techies but I didn't know what the echoes would look like and when I came here I realized that I don't see any 
difference. I saw lots of aspects and I heard about lots of aspects which connect the two groups or movements. And I also thought beforehand that maybe I would not know many people, but then I met lots of people I had known in my youth. And this did not only happen to me. And that's good, actually, because it shows that we share values. And maybe we've opted for different ways in order to achieve our goals. And maybe we use different methodologies. And maybe we have different priorities as far as our main questions are concerned. But the fundamental values we share, and that's what I like. Thank you. That makes us happy. Carla, what about you? I am grateful for having gotten an inspiration so that I start dealing with digitization much more. I really love this theme now after the two days. I probably won't join another initiative, but I think it's really important to focus on digitization in order to be aware of the fact that it's running through many different fields. And it truly also concerns the environmental movement, at least as far as I am concerned. And I'm actually not sure whether we are talking about two communities. Maybe I'm a tree and you are a bit, but then in the last workshop we asked who's a tree, who's a bit. And most people said, actually, I'm both. And that's exciting. And I think this is not what I had seen or expected before. So I'm very much looking forward to what will come out of it. Right. Trees growing together with bits. Eric. More of the same, I'd say. I'm from the free software movement. And about one and a half years ago, I started working on the connection between bits and trees, so to speak. For a long time, I felt left alone because there were not too many people who focused on digitization and on ecology. But now, there are more and more people who do so. And it's surprising and nice to see that lots of people who I've known for a long time, but whom I didn't see for many years, show up again, i.e. the topic is getting more important. And it's good that Bits and Trees has created a forum so that we could meet. Helena, what about you? I think it's difficult to identify the moment in which I realized that the two fields actually belong together. Actually, it's the whole weekend that made me see that bits and trees belong together. It's important to find fields where there are similarities, where there are things we share. And then we need to identify weaknesses and strengths in order to get together, in order to bring about this process of change successfully. Thank you for these first impressions. Of course, we'd love to know from you how We should continue. Maybe there will be another conference in 2019 or 2020. What would you do differently? I mean, based on the experiences you've had here, what would you change? Any ideas how 
to improve individual aspects or whether there are certain topics we should focus on, any empty spaces, anything left open? It's interesting to note that the social question also popped up because we had a focus on the technical side and on the ecological side, but we also talked about the social dimension. And it would be good maybe to have more experts or expertise for this particular aspect with us next year, next year or next time. I like to say that lots of things should be as they have been this time. It was an extensive and comprehensive program, exciting and much too many parallel meetings, of course. What I liked in particular was the patio. I would like to owe my respect to the person who did that particular design. It was extraordinary. It was good. And now concerning the social dimension, in spite of the fact that I wouldn't call it a social dimension, I agree we should have a stronger focus on this particular aspect. Sustainability, as we heard, is not about the ecological side only. It's also about a socially just society. This is not only about cutting jobs, losing jobs, or creating jobs. It's also about how gender relations change and how initiatives can use digitization. I mean, we know it from analog surveillance. There are initiatives, anti-racist initiatives, first of all, anti-fascist initiatives, first of all, who work against this permanent surveillance because they are concerned most. But uh, we could also consider all these aspects here at a conference, which would then be about digitization and sustainability and which has the name of bits and trees. And I'd like to also underline that it was wonderful to have gender balanced panels. We should maybe make sure that there is more participation from the audience next time. Maybe we find more innovative forms of participation instead of just handing a roving mic around because it's only a minority who's brave enough to stand up and move to the front and take the floor in such a big hall. So maybe people have ideas about this as well. Now, that's truly something we keep telling the people. I'd like to come back to the patio because, indeed, it's extraordinary. And anyway, the organization of this conference has been an excellent one. We truly enjoyed the well-designed patio, and we also loved being there or staying there last night. But as far as the booths are concerned, they could be much more in the focus. This time, I had the impression that it was important to exchange ideas and to talk about contents, but you really get people together in workshops and at the booths. There is a lot of information exchange at the booths. And there you can truly learn about what other initiatives do and what you can maybe learn from others. So people who come here with a given interest can get inspiration and find out where they want to be involved and how. We might therefore ponder the idea of having the um, booths or the exhibition on two floors 
where people walk around all the time. I mean, in the breaks, you have lots of people attending those um, exhibition booths, and this could be encouraged even more because it would help us understand each other much, be much better. In terms of themes or subject matters, I'd like to say that I'd like to bear in mind that the green movement or the eco movement is a bit older, i.e. they are experienced as far as digital, <laughs> sorry, civil disobedience is concerned. And I think the digital movement can learn from these people. So I'd be happy to have an opportunity to meet them and to discuss very concrete activities and campaigns. Yeah, vielen Dank euch. Thank you very much, Elisa. It was an experiment to try and find out what will happen when you bring together such different groups, people with such different backgrounds. So the only th thing you can do is provide a forum, see what the needs of these people wa were. And I think it was a wonderful thing this year. It worked out very well to create this place for interchange and exchange. We found so many things we have in common, at least I thought so. My question is, how are we going to move on? And uh, of course, uh, that is a question that uh, goes back to whether we are going to have a bits and boy a reloaded conference. We have met each other. How can we use the context we have? And the final question that we haven't answered yet is, how can we keep in touch? Do we have a format after this conference where I thought I need to go everywhere. I need to be present everywhere. I did not go to any of the workshops because I didn't manage to go uh, to the rooms who are so far away from this one. And I, I was constantly commuting between the rooms. So I think we should be courageous enough uh, to, issue, to be more innovative, more creative. F look at what our common demands are. We can learn from the sustainability movement how to work well politically, how to really target your opponents in official and unofficial channels. Uh, so we need to develop position papers, follow up catalogs, and uh, put in the names of the organizations that were present here. I mean, we couldn't do that this time because we had to find each other and uh, build confidence. We managed to do that. So next time, I would hope we would uh, bring together position papers and things that we can use also. We are not going to tell you a secret, but maybe we will have a small surprise for you. Since I heard somebody laughing, allow, allow me to add, I was asked n to make sure that every one of you can give his or her feedback too. In FRAP, in this submission system and in the app, there is the opportunity to give a feedback regarding the talks, the, the panel discussions, the workshops. So if you've got an idea, you can come back to us and every vote counts and every voice will be heard, not only those who are on stage right now. We have very creative people here on stage now. Elisa, you just said it, it is important to think about how to Continue. It's a question that we are concerned with. Let me ask you, what do you think would be a good format for us to continue our cooperation between the two scenes? How to solidify these links uh, and uh, forms of cooperation between our two scenes? Last night, we had a chance to meet each other and spend some time together, and we found out such a cooperation can lead to a, an enormous and very vital exchange of ideas. We had so many ideas, some crazy, some less crazy. What is typical is that this pilot project you talked about,
was so necessary because it would be so absolutely natural to link digitization and sustainability. And indeed, what is necessary is a solidification of this exchange, uh, development of a permanent exchange so that we can use our lessons learned in order to strengthen our organization. Like, for instance, the sustainability scene already has certain experience that the other scene, the digitalization scene, is still missing. Uh, somebody had an idea uh, to build a kind of tandem pilot project where a small group could be connected so that they can have an exchange and say, we are going to just meet and develop a common project. And that would prove that indeed our two different scenes belong together. Design, thinking and networking, two ideas. And we could work out, one could have this kind of tandem exchange, no matter how we do it, a one-to-one -one, uh, exchange partnership, so to say, or organizations li being linked with another organization. So that knowledge can be exchanged in a tandem form. And a common project could be developed in a design thinking workshop. Thanks for those ideas. I think what could work out quite well in a mutual exchange. Of course, we all need our initiatives, our movements, and they all need funding. They all need uh, project money. So we could have an exchange on where do we get our money from, what kind of practice, practical knowledge do we have. And then uh, get together, file applications for joint projects. And we can profit for that uh, from that in several ways, because hopefully if we get the project funding, we will have very innovative ideas. It's such a new topic to bring together technology and sustainability issues. And then hopefully we'll be able to also complete projects together successfully and uh, create more awareness amongst the people at large. So we need to look at where are any where are projects that are being planned so that we can do a lot also on the basis of maybe allocating funding skill sharing would be very meaningful i don't want to be too critical but indeed i wondered i try to focus on your question now I wondered, how do we manage not only to exchange our ideas and, and skills, support each other in the day-to-day -day struggle, but how can we go beyond that and look at what do we do, what do we want to do together, what do we want to achieve together? We have addressed that several times, but maybe that gives us a an opportunity to set up a movement, but I'm not yet so clear about the great common goal. What are the milestones that we need in order to bring together and sort of work together in the framework of all our communities? So I think we should think about the strategy. What do we want? I heard oftentimes different points of views and uh, questions regarding our relationship to the state. So it was interesting to note that uh, we had discussions about where to be under regulation or outside the state completely. So different ideas are out there and maybe we need to talk again about these differences before we really think about working together in a joint um, initiative. It's very interesting, yes, indeed. Let me add, I think the differences 
have something to do with the existing structures and how radical you are. I think there are many different sustainability movement, and the same goes for digitalization initiatives. They're also very diverse. So we cannot have everyone sharing one and the same opinion, but we need coordination mechanisms to get together and be strong in being together. Uh, it's difficult for me to talk about formats because I think we are all come from the grassroots movement. We are very good at organizing things, doing things. What we rather need is uh, the support structures. Support structures in the form of knowledge. Knowledge is always important. And here maybe we as uh, the techies can contribute to that. We always say people do use open source and that's not so trivial. Trivial. Maybe we can create a toolbox, look at the documentations and whether they're good enough to be used by others without losing time reinventing the wheel. Those could be the small things we can start doing right now and then go from there to the next level. Thank you very much to the four of you. Now we would like to ask you in the audience to take five minutes and talk to your neighbor and think about what is the moment, what is the lesson learned you are going to take home? Was there something very amazing, something you never heard before, something you've learned or something you take home to think about it? So just look at your neighbors. You can uh, form groups of two or three people. We'll give you five minutes for your internal discussions and then we are going to hand over to our panel again to talk about political demands. <laughs>
von dort nach hier, weil ja eh immer nur eine spricht. Okay, wir möchten euch jetzt bitten, das Murmeln langsam wieder einzustellen. Can you wind up your conversation? It's a good sign that so many of you are still talking, but we have prepared a number of things for you to follow on stage. So be seated again. Conclude your conversations. The organizers of this conference uh, consisted of 10 organize, uh, organizations, and our 10 organizations have agreed on a number of political demands. And they are supposed to be the result of our conference. And these political demands, we'd like to introduce them to you now. And from every organization that contributed to the conference, there will be one person introducing one political demand. Our organizations are here again that got together to host this conference. Andrea, are you going to start? No, you're going to be our facilitator. Christoph Waltz goes first. Managing Director of uh, German Watch, your first political demand. We have seen 10 organizations organizing this impressive conference together. Over 2,000 people attended the conference, and we think that this will influence the uh, discussion about digital transformation in our society and sustainability. And we hope that civil society actors and critical scientists together will and can shape digitalization and not leave it just to uh, business technologists and politicians. Digitalization might be something that happens automatically, but we must make sure it is geared towards the common good. That is to say, it should not be a digitalization that is lopsided and uh, is just committed to the growth agendas. It must be also committed to the development of our society, improvement of our society and social welfare. And that should not be an empty word. We sh digitalization should make a contribution to the transition in transport, in agriculture, in energy management and resource management. The protection of human rights should be strengthened. Climate goals should be promoted, poverty, hunger. And undignified the living conditions should be combated. Good labor and work in dignity should be promoted. And a sustainable and uh, sufficient lifestyle should be promoted too. Thank you very much. That was very disciplined because, as you can see, we have used digital tools to limit our speaking time. And, of course, we also used these digital tools to inspire you to listen to what we have to say and what we can say together. Nina Troy from Konzeptwert Neue Ökonomie is going to introduce the next demand. New economy, new economy uh, is uh, for a new, new economy ecologically and socially for everyone. We want people be involved in all processes that have repercussions on their life. And so here I would like to promote our democracy promotion uh, concept. All the ecological and economic goals can only be implemented if we have an far-reaching democratization. You can see our demand. Let me read. The basis of a fair and equitable society are democratic decisions. Digitalization must be shaped in a democratic way, and at the same time, it must uh, support democratic processes instead of hampering them. For that purpose, 
digitalization must be clearly geared towards leveraging emancipatory potential, decentralized participation, open innovation, and civil society engagement. It's such a complex demand. I had to read it. Sorry. We think that uh, comprehensive democratization means that democracy will now be extended to other social areas like technology, economy, and innovation. We have had many discussions about how we can shape the digital processes so that they are in line with our democratic uh, claims. We need a democratic process which to decide which technology do we need, which technology do we want. We need a deepening of democracy in uh, business, and we have to ask ourselves what kind of uh, management and business conduct is conducive to democratic processes and which are the business processes that are negative for democracy. If we want to implement the right to information self-determination, we need a democratic control over information and uh, the institutions that develop it. In order to implement all the demands that we have, we need to have pressure from the grassroots level. Comprehensive social changes in the service of people were always started at the grassroots level. And we must be willing and ready to defend our demands against the resistance of those profit-oriented capitalist uh, people who support the system. So let's get together. Let's uh, build up strong social movements in the interest of uh, technology in the service of people and society at large. Thank you. The next demand comes from Rainer Rehak from the Forum um, IT Specialist for Peace. Natürlich unsere inhaltliche Ausrichtung. We are experts, computer scientists for peace and social responsibility, and that's what we've put in our name. We've worked for more than 30 years in this field. We try to explain how technology works and what technology can do. And we think that it's important that people understand technology beyond the colorful brochures published by the manufacturers. Data protection, privacy and no manipulation. That's to be the basis of democratic societies and that's what we want to promote. Data protection for us is more than just a bit of privacy. Data protection is an eminent goal for us in a world that encompasses all human beings and pursues the interests of all. Data protection is thus not about what the individual can do or not on Facebook. Data protection is about digital asymmetries. So we should all be involved in the decision making and we should all have a chance to decide also against the interests of big corporations. That's the basis of a just and democratic society. Data protection thus is a chance, is an opportunity and must not be blocked by corporations. The human being is in the focus. And technological development must be geared at the development of the human being. Now, we might go and make the mistakes of the past once again, or we might opt for a new approach. So take data protection seriously, and that's what I'm meaning. Yeah, that's... Ja, vielen Dank, Rainer. Jetzt kommt als nächstes Tilman Santarius für die TU Berlin. 
Tillman Zantaris to you, Berlin. The 20th century was the century of oil, and maybe the 20th 21st century will be the century of data, which is certainly an economic model that offers lots of chances to many people. And yet we are facing the finance accumulation and the accumulation of information. Thus, if you think that data are the oil of the 21st century, you must make sure that this is not being exploited against the interests of the populations. We've witnessed the concentration of huge corporations like Shell and Exxon and others in the 20th century. And as far as data are concerned, we are dealing with the big five i.e., we need to do something, and yet there is hope at the beginning of the 21st century, because in the 20th century, we managed to destroy the oil empire. We need to, therefore, create alternatives for the digital economy, which is to be an economy for all of us, we need to break the monopolies of the operators and providers, for example, by obliging them to make interfaces available which allow for an access by all. So let's do Rockefeller Reloaded. <laughs> Ja, ganz herzlichen Dank. Dann bitte ich als nächstes Rolf Buschmann vom BUND. Rolf Buschmann, BUND. Digitization for us is certainly a possibility in view of whatever we have to expect. We are dealing with lots of transformations, mobility transformation, traffic and transport transformation. Of course, we would like to see the society involved in education will be key. In other words, we need transparency also in the field of education and training. And we need an integration of the technology into the common Good. We need to be capable of dealing with the technology which is being made available, which is being sold, and we need to be capable of repairing it in order to save resources. Digital education thus is key in order to be capable of adequately dealing with hate speech and fake news on the Internet, more facts is what we need, and this requires adequate education. Vielen Dank, Rolf. Jetzt kommt Thomas Corbun, Geschäfts. Thomas Corbun, IO. W. My demand involves development. Developing countries and emerging economies are facing major environmental challenges because they are trying to catch up and they are applying methodologies which are outdated and old-fashioned here. Now, this might repeat in the field of digitization, that's what we fear, i.e. digitization, monopoly, surveillance. All this might happen in developing countries and emerging nations too. And these are trends we see in countries where there is less 
self-organization, which might be another problem. Harald Welser said yesterday in the philosophical salon that we need to ask ourselves, what problem do I want to solve? We need local and national and global tools, approaches to solve local, national, and global problems. We need networks of the civil society, and we also need different economic systems. This means that we need to focus on the perspectives of the South in a future Bits and Trees conference. We talked about it before. We talked about the resources. We know that electronic devices are greedy and cost much and what damage they cause in the global South. However, we have not pondered the positive approach sufficiently. What can we do? How do we get the people of and from the South into our debates in order to really help us implement our obligations and fulfill our demands? Ja, damit bitte ich Sven Hilbig von Brot für die Welt sich anzuschließen zum Thema. Frank Hilbig, Brot für die Welt. Act in a fairer way. We say bilateral and multilateral cultural multilateral trade agreements must not include bans or restrictions in the field taxation, open source, and localization. For us, one question is key, i.e., how can we enhance the possibilities of participation for the South? In order to have them better participate, we need to improve the political scope of these countries in Germany and in industrialized nations, we are pursuing double strategies. On the one hand, entrepreneurs are called upon to undergo a digital transformation. And on the other hand, these companies, national companies or companies here are being protected against competition from abroad, which limits the scope for the countries of the South. And their scope is to be furthermore reduced. Silicon Valley has insisted for some time already that global commercial agreements should include a, a ban on the local storing of data, B, a ban of the access to source codes, and a ban on taxation or on levying taxes, which are to be paid by companies abroad, Microsoft, Google, and others wanted this in the past, and they have longed for having such a system. It has become, it has come to now. There is an agreement now and among the signatories are Canada and Australia, which includes these clauses. This undermines the sovereignty of the countries in the South. This is, so to speak, the gold standard for the Silicon Valley. What they wanted to come to has become part of bilateral trade agreements, and I want to extend it to more countries, but for the countries concerned, it's not a gold standard. 
it's rather a new challenge. And we need to make sure that the EU does not adopt these systems, neither on a European level nor in the context of a WTO standard. Thank you. Vielen Dank, Sven. Jetzt kommt Maria Bossmann vom D. Maria Bossmann, BNR. DNR. That's an umbrella organization. And of course, we are talking about the aspect of responsibility in the process of digitization, i.e., we are addressing the economy, the industry, and companies. The technology industry must be obliged to apply the principles of the human rights and ecological responsibility whenever it comes to resources and sustain sustainability. And that's all from my side, because the last speaker was speaking more than he should have. Consensus Accords, C, C, C. The CCC is a hackers association. So we are having the technical perspective here. And actually, I need to tell you that IT security is key with respect to whatever you want to implement from the activities, campaigns, ideas, and projects that have been mentioned in the last two year, days. And what we are seeing in terms of IT security is weak. Software with faults or which is not adequate has a negative impact for the user, for the security of the user's data and the digital infrastructure as a whole. Thus, we want software liability. Most major programs, software systems, which are being used in the country have been paid with public money. But we do see lots of holes. The reality we live in is an economically triggered one. Germany, however, enjoys a privilege. That's a fundamental right we've had for 10 years, and that's, that includes IT security. And there's also another fundamental right in terms of guarantees. Many projects that we talked about here can only be implemented on a safe and secure basis. And we wouldn't want to see our states and countries act in a lawless context. And neither do we want to act in such a context. So we need to focus on IT security furthermore. Vielen Dank, Constanze. Jetzt kommt Thank you, Constanze. We have Martin Evers as the last speaker, Managing Director of the Open Knowledge Foundation. He's going to speak about open source. He has uh, the last demand and the longest one. Longevity is a term that's very important for our movement. Longevity means that I can repair a product that it will be designed for a long maintenance and use period, and I can use it 
the way I want to use it. Um, but um, this device had a small problem one day, three days ago. It fell on the street when I was on the bicycle and um, a truck ran over it. The gadget survived, but still it's not a long-lived product because it is not going to survive the next uh, software update. So, and so longevity would mean we would have to have an open source product, open source software, and it should be a device that one could even call open source hardware. Open source means that I disclose the source code, that I can copy and reuse it, that the software on it is uh, usable and changeable so that I can repair my software or uh, invite assistance to do it for me. Mm. Open hardware uh, is the same idea. Open hardware should uh, be long-lived, uh, be used with uh, open source software. So we would like to have both things, open hardware and open software. And for that, we demand um, state support that uh, we have devices that do not only survive a car crash, but also our day-to-day -day usage. Thank you very much for these political demands. I haven't even seen this picture. It looks great. Cool. These are the demands that we are going to carry into the world. We did that before. We did it as individual organizations. Now we are going to rally and make our demands together. I think that is a wonderful closing word. But an even more important closing wo wo uh, word will come from Anja Höfer from EUW. Thank you. Okay. I have a wonderful backdrop behind me. Thank you very much for these great words, for the demands. The demands has already published them at Netzpolitik. I hope so, at least, or is in the process of putting them online so you can see all of that live. Now, having heard a summary of our conference. I would like to thank all of you, all the previous uh, speakers on the panel. They didn't even get a round of applause, so they should get it now. And before we look at our next plans, next plans for the next hours, before we do that, I would like to thank those who made this conference possible so that all of us could be on stage and uh, say some big and important words. Thanks to all of those who have provided you with food. Thanks to the organizers uh, and the workers that have been active to make this conference happen. Hopefully, you have all supported us. Uh, you all came as participants. Thank you. It was a great pleasure to have so many of you here. We would like to thank everyone who supported us, the people from Flaming Kitchen, the people from Paradiso who did the lights. Uh, you said that the inner courtyard of the university was beautifully illuminated. There was some resistant uh, on the part of uh, the university management, they didn't want to have the lighting, the colorful lighting that we had installed, but we prevailed. Now, I would like to be you absolutely light, uh, loud when I say Katja Georga, please come on stage, uh, representing our conference office, the office of our organizers. Genau. Katja 
Katja steht hier. Das sagt Katja represents also the other two people in the conference office, uh, Yekaterina Sergeyenko and Eva Ladevik. I'll hand over to Katja now. Thank you, as Anja said. Behind this conference, there is a lot of work, most of it invisible to you. It would not have been possible without the conference team. So I would like to thank my two co-organizers, Eva and Yekaterina. It was a great time with you. And I also would like to thank all the other helpers who've been at our side during the conference, uh, those of you who reported to us to be volunteers. There were lots of people who helped in a wonderful way. So it was a great experience being with you. Although, of course, it was very hard for us and we reached, some of us reached the limit, but the success of this conference is really wonderful. You can also help us some more tonight if you stay on to clear up the conference rooms. There's not so much you need to do, but Anya is going to give you more information how to help and where to go. Okay. Thank you, Katja. Now we are going to be very precise and very practical. Katja said that we had a pan panel called Get Organized. Together with you, we would like to organize. It is uh, 5.30 uh, Sunday evening, it's dark and you want to go home. But if all of you stay a little while, or at least some of you, then it's much easier for us to uh, rearrange the rooms. Um, at the entrance, you are going to find the three ladies from the information table and they have a list, list of tasks. And it would be wonderful if you all said, OK, I can stay on for 15 more minutes and do something. What we need to do is uh, remove all the labels that we have distributed on all the floors. In the beginning, we had too few uh, indications and, and labels. Now it's too many. The black rubber floor must be freed of all the markings. They were wonderful uh, to give you some neon light illumination, but tomorrow they need to be gone. The same goes for the cups. I am sure there will be many cups left in many rooms. Please collect them. We need to have someone to check is there any cup that needs to be taken to the black boxes of Flaming Kitchen. Same goes for deposit. We need some people to do the washing up. Um, as I said, we cannot exert pressure on you because there will be no more food available, but it would be wonderful for Flame and Kitchen to take back their dishes in a clean state. We have tried to avoid waste, but still there are some waste baskets uh, that need to be taken to the inner courtyard. So it would be cool if some of you stayed on. Uh, of course, we need some people who stay for a longer while. Uh, we have to remove all the uh, the the color foils from the uh, from the lamps. So maybe some of you would like to open up the lamp, standing on a scaffold on a ladder, and take the foils out. I have one more in announcement that goes beyond the next couple of hours. We have had a video streaming and that was done by the VOC team. Let's give them a hand. We would like to have a conference documentation that goes beyond the uh, just mere video. And that is why we would like to know from all of you where you come from, why you decided to join this conference. We have prepared a survey. We are going to send you a Twitter link and we'll put it online and send it around via email. We will do that tonight. So as soon as you get back home, 
and relax on your sofa, you can just fill in the survey. It would be very helpful to get your feedback, to get a complete res um, representative picture of what you think as participants. That was my announcement. I couldn't stay in many of the lectures and panel discussions, but we talked about our impressions last night, and there was some participant, there was one participant who said it was like a first date, this conference, because the discussion was a bit too nice and cozy. People did not uh, venture to confront one another. So hopefully this first date uh, was just the beginning and made you curious for more. So thanks for being here and have a safe trip back home.